Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to discuss another important topic, which is uh, anti-thrombotic treatment in stroke. This is very important. A number of times we make a mistake. We give anticoagulant to a patient who needs antiplatelets and give antiplatelets to a patient who needs anticoagulant and dual antiplatelet to a patient who may be needing anticoagulant. Similarly, giving anticoagulant to a patient who needs dual antiplatelets. So how to decide after stroke when and which anti-thrombotic should be given to the patient, especially with ischemic strokes. So this short video clip will give you an idea and you can then further validate things by searching literature to know what happens afterward and how to decide regarding different treatment strategies. First, before deciding how to give or which treatment should be given, it's important to evaluate etiology of stroke. That's very key. So that's why I kept this first algorithm of approach towards stroke. We usually, when we have focal neurological deficits of the patient with stroke, we do CT or MRI. But it can show, it can show you ischemic or hemorrhagic. So if you have an ischemic stroke, then go and do an ECG, although it's not direct uh, cardiac symptom. Why is it important to assess for rhythm or any background cardiac structural problems to evaluate further? And after ECG, you may need transthoracic echo or transesophageal echo. And this is for the purpose to exclude embolic stroke. Why? You will see the management differences. Why is it important to identify whether your ischemic stroke is embolic or atherosclerotic? And then if it's not showing ischemia, then you need CT, MRI. And if it mimics stroke, then you may need later on imaging with these two modalities. Then one pathway is to get ECG. After ECG, you is, you're evaluating the heart status as well as the carotid circulation status. So these two things are important in an ischemic stroke to evaluate for cardioembolic or emboli from any other side, or is it atherosclerotic? problem with the carotid vasculature or even posterior or interior vasculature supplying to the brain. For that, you need anterior circulation in part, yes or no. Then accordingly, CTA, MRA or ultrasound of carotids, non-invasive intracranial arterial imaging, or non-invasive imaging if it's posterior uh, arteries and extracranial vertebral basal arteries. This is the workbook of artery supplying to the brain, so circulation assessment. And again, the point is cardioembolic or atherosclerotic. And then if you have identified cause, manage accordingly. And what will be the management we'll discuss regarding thrombotic treatment. If you haven't identified the etiology, then you need further assessment as well. These are other medical comorbidity, clinical syndrome, considering rare causes of stroke here it's given, which is rare to identify, but you need after this algorithm. Now let's come to our topic and you'll see how it relates with it. Here is it. So if your patient, in a patient with stroke TIA caused by 50 to 99% stroke of a major intracranial artery, aspirin is recommended in preference of orphan to reduce the risk of recurrent skin and stroke and vascular death. Means by the stroke is not cardiac, uh, embolic. You need aspirin. So you found disease in 
cranial arteries. Similarly, in patients with recent stroke or TIA, within 30 days, attributed to, to severe stenosis of 70 to 99% of a major intracranial vessel, addition of chloroperoxyl 75 milligram to aspirin for up to 90 days is reasonable for progeny. So you need dual antiplatelet in this situation where your vasculature having a uh, stenosis of 70 to 99 percent, you may add on. And this is a 2A recommendation. Flow program for 90 days, the dual antiplatelet for 90 days in that situation. Similarly, in patients with recent within 24 hour minus stroke with concomitant accelerator greater than 30 percent stenosis of major vessel, you can read on. You have this option of adding 90 milligram twice a day clopidogrel with aspirin for 30 days. So this combination can be tried. This may be tried. Even the third option of celestazole, you can read it out according to the stenosis and status, you can do that. So this antiplatelet is basically when you found problem with the carotid arteries. But what if you found a patient with atrial fibrillation, found a etiology which is related to cardioembolic stroke, then these are the different strategy, which is non-valvular AF, stroke, portal anticoagulant with DOEX, Fixiban, Dibigatron, Eroxa, this all. In patients with AF and stroke or TIA, oral anticoagulant is indicated to reduce the risk of recurrent V whether it's paroxysmal, persistent, or permanent, even transient AF, you have to do that. In patients with stroke, TIA, and AF, you do not have moderate to severe mitral stenosis. DOEX should be preferred over warfarin. In patients with atrial flutter, stroke, TIA, and table therapy, similar to AF, we know all, we all know. In patients with AF and stroke and uh, TIA without moderate to severe mitral stenosis, INR level warfarin, again, DOEX. So this you can read it out by yourself, just pausing, or pausing my voice and read these. These are the further points in relation to that. Patient with stroke, high risk of hemorrhagic conversion. That's important. In the setting of AF, it is reasonable to delay initiation of oral anticoagulation beyond 14 days to reduce the risk of intracranial hemorrhage. A very large infarct in consultation with neurologists who have this tendency that this infarct may turn out to be hemorrhagic. Stop your anticoagulant 14 days and then restart. In patient TIA in the setting of non valvular way, reasonable to initiate anticoagulant immediately after the index, even to reduce the risk of recurrent stroke. So, this TIA, if with embolic, yes, you need to start anticoagulant. In patient with stroke or TIA in the Setting of non valvular pair for contraindication, lifelong anticoagulation, 30 days. This is something else that you have to do if anticoagulation is contraindication. You can do that. In patients with stroke at low risk for hemorrhage conversion, the setting of where it may be reasonable to initiate anticoagulation, 2 to 14. So it's a small part. You have not that much risk for hemorrhage conversion. You can start your anticoagulant even on second day. Of in patients with AF and stroke or TIA who have end-stage renal disease or on dialysis, it may be reasonable to use warfarin or apixaban. I hope this will help you in your managing your patient with the stroke and deciding about antithrombotic treatment. So hope this video clip will help you in future in managing your patient.